Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everyone. I'm Shkil Ahmed from Deanship of E-Learning and IIT. I welcome you all, the Jazan University faculty members, in the new session and especially in the new semester. Now it's almost end of the session, but this is the last semester, and we are here with new topics. And you know that we always try to bring some innovative ideas which can help to groom your professional skills. Everybody understand that communication is the art of sharing meaningful information with people by an exchange of ex experiences. In the modern era, communication technology is growing up from earth to sky. So more changes in human life and behavior patterns. Modern evolution follow uh, through modern communication devices and equipment even in education nowadays. Different e-learning platforms and content tools are specifically designed for the development of e-learning and, uh, and what, what kind of e-learning, development of e-learning content formats such as computer-based trainings, web-based trainings and mobile content or simulations and simulation games. What, what is the topic? I mean, like, why we have chosen this uh, topic? This is really interesting series of topics. We are going to bring it over here. As I earlier said, that um, we always try to bring new training sessions with powerful content, which would help you to groom uh, your professional skills. Jazan University is in the process of upgradation of its LMS system. LMS means the learning management system, which you're already using, that is Blackboard. And uh, right now we are using Blackboard Learn. And uh, in the next session, I mean, we are already in the, I mean, like the pilot projects, we are just testing different type of uh, features over there. And I, I believe, I hope we can have this new upgrade in the coming session. So we have decided to bring a series of different sessions and different, uh, I mean, like training sessions for you guys. Uh, to build the understanding, uh, to develop the understanding with the new interface and features of uh, the new Blackboard. And what is that one? Earlier, we are using Blackboard Learn, and now we are going to upgrade uh, to Blackboard Ultra. There are, I mean, like the basic platform is uh, similar and the same, but some new features being added in this new platform. And we have added some new features in the Blackboard original. Which one was the Blackboard original, which you already using? Now they're using the name like Blackboard original, that is Blackboard Learn. And uh, what we are going to upgrade, that is Blackboard Ultra. <clears throat> so there is some updation and new features in Blackboard original. And today we're gonna discuss all these new features that how you can accommodate with these new features in the semester three. And before taking start with the original for uh, filling up uh, some kind of forms and um, uh, descriptions and any other things to need to discuss and very detailed session uh, about these new features. But I'll take start uh, because uh, in last, I think so in a couple of sessions, I have already discussed that Blackboard is uh, now owned by the new company that is Anthology. So we are gonna have an, like um, overview about the anthology, what is anthology and how they form it. Basically, Blackboard, Campus Labs, uh, Campus Management and I modules came together to form anthology and create a comprehensive ecosystem of ED Tech uh, and what kind of ED Tech, ED Tech solutions uh, to serve institutions and learners around the globe. Anthology system is a community of former educators and education supporters, and they are inspired by the possibilities of data-driven approaches to improve and enhance the quality of education and make the better lives of learners, educators, and leaders in the education sector. So we can say anthology system work to help create experiences that are more informed and personalized to support learning, teaching, and leading more effectively.
what kind of uh, services anthology is uh, basically introducing uh, LMS, SIS, and CRM classroom to career-based uh, facilities they're offering and all these facilities at anthology and they offer you these tools and more because a learners doesn't exist inside one system alone. Their holistic uh, ecosystem of edtech solution is designed to open a world of possibilities for institutions and learners. With a heart for education and eyes set on the future, Anthology is uniquely positioned to provide dynamic, data-informed experiences to the global education community so that learners and educators can achieve their goals. So here uh, is a different fields and industries. They are offering their services. They have to uh, uh, tickle out with the industries, higher education, business, government, and K-12 all these type of industry, they're tackling it out over there. But here is a question that what is a difference between Blackboard Learn and Blackboard Ultra? Why we are going to upgrade and what kind of features have been gonna introduce in Blackboard Ultra? The Ultra course view is cleaner uh, with a more modern design and easy to use workflows. It is also has powerful new tools that are not available in the original course view, like this discussion analytics and many other tools which are available uh, in the Ultra, but they are not available in the Blackboard Learn, the original view. But keep in mind that all courses will continue to use the original view by default and faculty can choose whether to enable the ultra courses view or they can keep it in their old uh, fashion, like all the original Blackboard. So it is a choice by default, all the courses are available in the original view. And but if you want to upgrade to ultra, you can do it. Or for example, you have more than one courses, four, five, three courses, and you want to upgrade one course to Ultra, you can do it over there. Uh, but I believe uh, if you're going to experience, if you want to improve your professional skills, you have to go and learn with the new skills. We already planning to introduce different kind of sessions uh, about Blackboard Ultra to introduce you with the new features, interface, and all these things. We will try to train you up. But you guys will decide that you're going to learn the new things or you want to keep the old, uh, old passion and old pattern like Blackboard Learn. And even then, it will be already helpful because from last uh, three to four years, we were already using Blackboard. You're already familiar with the old look. Now the time to change up. You have to go ahead and plan it. Before taking start, uh, uh, I'm going to show you a small video which can help you to understand with the interface of uh, Blackboard Ultra. But in this session, we are not going to discuss in detail the Blackboard Ultra run because this is the first session I mean, of this series. So we are going to discuss uh, I mean, like some features which already been introduced in the Blackboard original. And in the next session, from the next session, we have to take start with the Ultra. But have a look and try to build understanding about the new interface of Ultra. Learning is a lifelong journey towards becoming a contributing, effective, and proud member of society. Today's learner is on a journey, a path towards self-discovery. Her journey is shaped by knowledge acquisition, but more importantly, it's about her shared experiences. During this educational journey, she'll develop a sense of self and make informed decisions about her future. Her journey is marked by accomplishments. And she'll experience new decision points and collaborative learning that exists outside of a traditional classroom. The new learning experience is supported by our ecosystem of integrated solutions that span K-12 education and higher ed. Blackboard Learn, our flagship LMS, has been redesigned to support the changing needs of learners. With the new Ultra experience, learners receive curated notifications about their courses. Course content is instantly available. 
you can find a new interface in the Blackboard Ultra, and uh, I believe you can find it more easy and more, uh, I mean, um, decent options to organize your courses, your, uh, I mean, chapter-wise, your all the content and many other things, you can manage it in a better way uh, than before. Interacting with classmates and instructors is easy. With Blackboard Collaborate, learning has no boundaries. Rich video and audio create a seamless learning experience, and learners can easily study with one another in and out of class. And our brand new BB Student app ties all of our capabilities together into a single contained learner-centric solution. This simple, easy to use mobile design helps learners move quickly through the app. Students can view course content and track progress through their course and video and audio collaboration is fully integrated into the mobile product for learning on the go. This is a lifelong journey, a twisting path of rich experiences and personal and professional growth. And as learners experience personalized and connected education, they build and refine their identity, gain confidence and knowledge, and transform their lives, their community and society. This is the new learning experience from Blackboard. So that was um, a, a little demo video about uh, Blackboard Ultra that uh, to just to give you an idea about uh, the interface of the Blackboard Ultra. Now we're gonna take start, where to take start and what kind of start uh, I mean, like we do have for the next one. You just need to log in as you use with your credential in uh, to Blackboard original. And once you log in, you can find it something very interesting over there that is a course plan form for instructors. We do have a practical sessions. I mean, like uh, after a few slides, I'm going to sh uh, shift it to the practical session. So I will show you by logging into the Blackboard and uh, I will tell you how you can make all these editing inside that form. Uh, once you log in in your uh, course, you can find it out, start it here. You can see in, in uh, the menu, start here or Ibdahina. Arabic and English. This is originally, this form is in Arabic, uh, but you can find, you can convert this one into, uh, into English as well. One second. Uh, you can easily convert and edit this form and you can convert into English as well. What is this kind of form and what is the purpose of this plan? This is basically course plan form and this form is for creating the course plan before start the semester. A course plan includes not only the goals and the content topics, but also how the topic will be taught and what the students will do during the course. In order to achieve uh, end of semester goals, students must have practice during the semester. This form will include the basic information of the instructor, course information, style of teaching course, objectives of teaching the course and uh, there are many other options which we're going to discuss in detail that how you can uh, start with this one so now the time uh, let's have a live demo of uh, blackboard form so i'm gonna take uh, me like switch to the real environment so stay tuned with me here we have Oh, I'm already logged in, so I'm gonna have a look. Just wait a moment. Okay. You can log in, but uh, I mean, like lmsdesignu.edu.sa. This is a normal, like uh, Blackboard login. You can log in with your credential. And once you log in, you can have a course list in front of you. I do have one course. So I'm going to click on that course one. And once I'm inside the course, uh, I can find out my course. Let's click 
and you can find the third tab that is start here at the henna. So I'm going to click on this one. So here is a form uh, in front of me. This is a course plan form. And uh, uh, the good thing is uh, that you can edit this form by, uh, by putting some information related to your course. Uh, by origin, this course is available, I mean, like this form is available in Arabic, but you can translate it by Google Translator and uh, you can even change uh, uh, by, by editing. Like I put it over here, I'll listen, name, workplace, email, mobile, but if you don't want to put your, uh, yourself in trouble, just right click on that form or in this area and you can one moment please i have to be able to translate it yeah you can uh, do it mean you can translate uh, from arabic to english by right click and if this option is not available here you can simply uh, install the like google extension over here the translation extension and once you click on that one it will translate to Arabic and proper languages, it will help you to translate it. Why is it not coming with me? One second, please. There is some issue. Yeah, it should be. Why is not available? Translation is available. It's disabled here. It was working perfectly earlier. Give me a moment, let me fix it out. Click on the course. Why doesn't I receive it? Translation. Yes, yeah, translated into Arabic, but why not in translating in English? Some technical issue with this one. Yes, now I got it. I think there was uh, some malfunctioning over there. Now I got it. You just re need to right click on the form and translate to English. Once you click on that one, this will automatically translate uh, your Arabic form into to the English. Now in the first one, like uh, it's pretty simple, simply fill the information related to the instructor because you have to put it there, name and workplace, your email, mobile number and brief biography about the instructor because this is related to information uh, which, uh, which instructor need to fill up about themselves. But what if you want to add it, how you can add it? Like, you can see a drop-down menu over here, a drop-down arrow, just simply click on that one. 
And here is a complete list in front of you. You just need to do one thing, click on add it, and it will translate it, I mean, like it will be in front of you, enabled form of uh, like editing form. Whatever you want to add, you can add it here. For example, I gonna put my name in next step, uh, like uh, Dean Ship of Learning and IT. Okay, email, I will put email. And in this way, you can make the changes. And once you've done the changing, and you can see, you can upload uh, some kind of local file, you can att attach some kind of uh, browser from the courses and the cloud services even available. And there are some other options available permit users to view this content. If you want to by default is yes, but if you want to hide the content from the student, you can click no. Uh, track number of views by default, no. If you want to uh, know that how many people tracking you and numbers you want to show over there, you can click yes. And another very nice idea and we like options available that is select data time restrictions that if you want to display these information in between specific time, like the semester start and semester end date, you can mention everything over here. Uh, I'm gonna uh, leave all the default options. And once you're done on the bottom, you can find out submit button and click on submit and you can see all the changes has been saved. So here you can see all the changes, whatever I done is available here. Again, I'm going to translate this uh, into English. So you would have more clear idea. Now the, uh, the second tab is really important, course information. You have to put the course name, course code, and um, uh, like uh, teaching language, what kind of teaching language you're gonna use it, uh, course description course teaching time and the college in which you are teaching this course. But this is not the only information, what kind of information you need to keep in your mind that what you have and what you do not have it over there. What do's and don'ts, what is like important and what is not important. So keep in your mind that course information means information on academic and recreational classes, including course name, course code, which teaching language are you gonna uh, teach and course description. Course description tab is really important and uh, there are some kind of tips in front of me that I can show you that what kind of tips you do have for the course description. The first of all, the course description should be no longer than 100 words. You need to keep in your mind that do not try to elaborate in a very detailed manner. So you have to keep yourself that it should not be more than 100 words. Write from a student-centered perspective and use uh, present tense and active voice. Uh, use clear and simple sentence structure and language. Use then, I mean like, you, you need to focus on that one, that uh, your sentences uh, use gender neutral language, uh, use common terms that uh, are prospective of students understanding, students need to understand easily all these things. And uh, what else you need to know? Use industry approved technical terms and acronyms when appropriate. And uh, use generic terms when referring software specifically for the softwares. Only use specific software names if they are the central focus of the course or if they are required for course delivery. So you need to focus all these things uh, by at, at the time of writing. But there should be what shouldn't be included in the course description. Uh, it's pretty simple: course title, numbers, and levels in which the course is offered are not included in the course descriptions and they are indicated elsewhere. The second part, the, the, I mean like the intended course delivery mode, hybrid, online, in-class are not included in the course description. So you need to avoid all these things in your courses. The next one is uh, 
you can see the style of teaching the course. What style of teaching? There are multiple styles. This is not only the way that you are going to teach in the English or Arabic. You need to focus some kind of things in your mind. The teaching style also called teaching methods. And they are considered to be the general principles, educational and management, management strategies for classroom instructions. Teaching methods uh, depends on the teacher's preferences, the student's needs, and the subject. The use of different teaching styles started in the beginning of the 20th century. And this was due to the amount of research being poured into different learning methods. Once we understood uh, that everybody learned differently, it became obvious that there need to be different teaching styles to accommodate the learning styles. So what kind of learning styles we do have it? If you can see on the screen, you can find there are two learning uh, styles and uh, there are two teaching methods and teaching styles. One is basically uh, teachers or student-centered and the second one is low tech or higher tech. What is the difference in between uh, these two? Uh, using these two principles, four different teaching methods can be extracted such as teacher-centered high-tech approach and teacher-centered low-tech approach, student-centered high-tech and low-tech approach. So these four uh, I mean like uh, categories, again, extracted from this one, we're gonna discuss in detail what kind of uh, categories all these do have it. In high-tech learning environments, students may use any or all of the following. What? Laptops, tablets, collaboration apps, education-based networks to connect with students around the world, and different type of softwares. They are designed to facilitate gamification learning. So these all are high-tech. Although te technology can enhance the classroom environment, some teachers prefer low-tech teaching methods. I mean, they don't want to use the technology a lot in their classrooms. By keeping class low tech, students cannot access modern shortcuts such as uh, spell check, calculations, and uh, autocorrect options. All these tools are available for our understanding and for the facilitation, but sometimes it will take away the learning from the students because students do not try to help themselves to understand and try to catch up all this, uh, all uh, just because of these tools, high-tech tools. So some uh, some teachers try to avoid these tools. And what is the benefit for that one? This can improve the student's reading, writing, and mathematical skills. And they are forced to work out these issues without being answered by a tablet or computer. Once they are forced by the teachers to uh, work without all these tablets and computers, they do have their energy, their uh, mind-making facilities over there. They try to uh, focus on that one, that how they can solve these issues without the computers and tablets. In addition, some teachers prefer to communicate with students directly, and uh, some subjects are best delivered in this way. When students have access to the range of technology, they may become distracted and communication with the teachers may be affected. by Opting for low-tech teaching methods, teachers can ensure uh, the students stay on task more easily. So there are different type of, uh, you can say, um, I mean like the, the methods, the style. So it depends upon the teacher, what kind of methods they are, uh, I mean like um, preferring over there. So uh, it's all about the teacher's priority and the need of, uh, uh, need of the students at that time so they can choose in a better way. Have you, uh, you got an idea about the teaching style? What else? I have one question, a very uh, quick question. What kind of teaching styles uh, in your mind? In, in I mean like 30 seconds, you have to write one sentence in your mind that what kind of teaching methods are, uh, I mean like, in high profile, like I have discussed, there are four types of teaching methods, like um, our teacher centers approach, the student center approach, and with high and low term. Do you agree with this one? Or you have your, uh, your own idea? I'm waiting for your answer. We have 30 seconds only. Mashallah, we have a long list of participants and I'm waiting for you for your answer.
we do have 30 seconds uh, to discuss about the which uh, like uh, teaching style is uh, better than the other one, okay? And how do you support your comments? I'm waiting for you. Student central learning. Why is, uh, I mean like why uh, this is important, student central learning? Dr. Santi. Only one participant is active, very bad. To have, okay, participatory learning, great. What else, anybody else? I'm waiting for your answer. We have 30 more seconds to answer for all these things. Hello, hello everyone. I'm waiting for your answer, please. Your participation not only make it a more active session, if you are just logging and sleeping over there, it doesn't work for you. I believe you have to be active and participate with me. So this will help not only for you, but all other participants, they can learn more. We have 30 seconds. Now 20 left. I'm waiting for 15 more seconds, please. Otherwise, we will continue. Login and inactive. Okay. Uh, I can, I'm going to move on. The next option is that is the general objectives of the course. There are multiple, uh, I mean, like general objectives you can uh, choose in your course. And um, a course objective describes what a faculty member will cover in a course. They are generally less broad uh, at that goals and more broad than students' learning outcomes. Learning objectives are statements that clearly describe what students will be able to know um, or they value as a result of their educational experience. Learning objectives should be written so that even those who are unfamiliar with the disciplinary expertise can clearly understand that they can expect to gain from the course and should identify measurable behaviors or quality of student work. Here is a one question, what is the purpose of the learning objectives? Uh, the purpose is clear, effective learning objectives help both instructors and students succeeded. At that time, if you have a clear objectives, so uh, the teacher do have preparation according to these objectives and he can uh, teach the students accordingly and they can, uh, a teacher can easily engage the students according to all these activities and objective. For instructors, clear learning objective facilitate making hard decisions about uh, uh, like selecting a course and uh, designing assessment to evaluate students' progress and uh, developing instructional tech activities uh, that will facilitate student learning at in the end, measuring and assessing students' learning. They can easily measure and assess if they have a proper learning objectives. And if we have to discuss about uh, uh, for students, uh, clear learning objective facilitate, what kind of facilities uh, students can have it by the objectives. They can I mean like making hard decisions about whether the course is a good fit for their goals and backgrounds or identifying what they will need in order to successful in the course. Developing the incremental skills necessary to achieve mastery of the like uh, course content or measuring and assessing their own progress and learning. All these facilitations can be done if you have a clear objectives. The next one is course study requirements. Uh, like what kind of course study requirements you do have it. Uh, if you can see in the form, you can find out there are two options, mandatory or compulsory and optional. Basically, course uh, requirement means the set of academic requirements, uh, the course subjects 
uh, which are mandatory for completion of the course. The main goal behind this is to ensure that all learners take and finish courses typically observed as culturally and academically essential. It includes the courses that teach learners the skills and um, uh, foundational knowledge uh, they would need in careers and adult life. However, depending on the institution's structure, a course of study may be unique for different students. For instance, many institutes uh, run parallel programs at the given period. The requirements to complete each one of them is distinct. Uh, with time, the structure of this form of study has changed. So it depends about the uh, educational institution, what kind of uh, like course study materials and requirements they, do they have it. The next one is uh, educational material uh, accompanying the course. One, uh, one you have to mention over there is uh, self-explanatory, no need of more details, because what kind of uh, educational materials you needed, what, uh, which books necessary and different type of references. And if it is related to computer or any other uh, program which do need the softwares, you have to mention the softwares and any other material which is related to your course, you have to put it over here so student can understand that what kind of material they, know, they do need it. Or in case at that time, for example, some kind of books, a teacher and instructor already have it, they can upload over here so the student can download or by reading that uh, the name of that course books, they can buy from the market. What kind of technical requirements? Uh, it's pretty simple. It's, I mean, like technical requirements are the technical issues that must be considered to successfully complete a course. These can include aspects such as performance, reliability, and availability. For example, you are a computer teacher, you need a lab, so you need to make it sure that before the classroom, uh, how many computers you needed, how many students, and how many computers you needed, uh, and all these working devices, what kind of software you needed. So you have to put all in your plan. So uh, before the class, you have to give this requirement to the technical staff, made, uh, technical staff inside the labs so they can prepare everything before the class. So that's it with the technical requirements, not uh, I mean like too uh, deep knowledge you needed because all these are self-explanatory. But course teaching policies and rules, this is really important. By the way, sometimes we uh, we just think that this doesn't belong to us. Policies and rules, they are from the management side too. This is from the management side. What kind of privacy, academic honesty, theft, fraud, forgery, student works, delay in submitting work, and what kind of actions being taken in against them if they uh, like break the rules. But being a teacher, being an instructor, I believe you do have an idea that how you can prepare uh, the effective rules and policies. Here I have mentioned there is a guideline for designing an effective rule and you can see there are five uh, uh, specific rules. Uh, number one is specific, positive, adoptable, few and sensible. What does it mean? Specific means rules need to be as specific as possible. Only the specific uh, rules, you, you, you need to be focused on direct on the core structure so you can plan accordingly. Positive, state your rule in the positive rather than the negative. For example, instead of uh, don't yell in class, say speak quietly in class. I mean, like this is the simple way I mean, you are asking your students, uh, this is a rule. Do not try to shout inside the class. If you say speak quietly in class, so it means I mean, like I mean, you, you are uh, trying to convey the simple and easy, but in the positive way. Adoptable mean like periodically evaluate your rules and their effectiveness. If at any time a rule doesn't seem to be working, change the rule. It doesn't matter that you have created one rule and it is uh, not suitable for the student, for the classroom, for that course, for the teachers. So you have to be adoptable. Uh, you're ready to change that rule or uh, you, you, you can I mean like uh, make the changes according to the need of the students and the teachers. It doesn't mean like you have created one rule 
and you said no uh, we're not going to change anything according to the situation you have to be adoptable the next option is few keep your rules few in numbers uh, you should have no more than five rules don't try to be 100 rules or 50 uh, sentences rules you have to try to as low as possible maximum as the suggestion is maximum you have five rules inside the classroom so they can be easily managed and you try instead of putting five different rules you try to make it one rule that can cover all these five points and agenda the last one sensible make rules that make sense very important i hope you got it any rule that is, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, don't make, go for the stupid type of uh, rules which are not applicable and uh, those hurt the students or teachers, their dignity, their, I uh, mean, like uh, respect level. So you, you all have to keep in mind at the time of uh, preparing or designing effective rules, this is, you have to keep, uh, I mean, like these guidelines for designing effective rules so it would be effective for everyone inside the classrooms so that was related to the course policies and rules you have to tell your students that uh, honesty is important inside the classroom nobody is involved with the uh, i mean like theft or fraud or uh, some kind of forgery so whatever in your mind I already told you that what are the specific rules and policies you can go ahead with this one and you you can choose and you can write over here. The next one is policy for the use of communication tools. What kind of uh, policy you're going to uh, prepare for the communication tools. In this section, communication etiquette is explained. What kind of uh, communication etiquette, uh, respect others, not to offend, uh, not to engage in political or religious discussions outside the scope of course and correct writing without errors. So this is basically a policy for the use of communication tool and um, uh, you, you can give them different type of, uh, I mean like the email, forums, discussions, communication, because all these are communication tools. But if you are not going to give them, I mean uh, guide them that how you can use all these uh, platforms the student can um, I mean like abide different type of rules so for example they are in the forum and they are you give them access for the form, forums to discuss the uh, different type of problems and situations in this um, area and they start discussing about the religious activities or the political activities they start discussing some kind of personal uh, I mean hobbies or something like that so it means it is distracting them from the course so you have to prepare the policy uh, to use the communication tool that once you are using the uh, like communication tools at that time you need to respect others don't try to um, I mean like uh, don't try to involve yourself in the personal activities and don't try to offend and uh, and not to engage yourself in different type of uh, negative activities. So all these communication rules you can set on this course. The next one is course content. Uh, this is again uh, self-explanatory but really very important and we do have a little bit uh, discussion about this one that you have a lesson-wise set of objectives, lesson topic, educational activities and criteria about assignment. Uh, but you need to keep in mind that uh, the schedule is uh, repeated for all units and lessons with the same mechanism. You have to set your objectives in first lesson. For example, you are going to create first lesson. Here is an example. First lesson, what are objectives for this lesson? You have to put it over here. Lesson topics, which topics you're going to cover and um, what kind of educational activities and assignments been done in this lesson. Everything should be planned and written over here so students can see and they can follow everything uh, easily instead of they mean, for example, you do not have a plan and you didn't share with the students. It means they are blind, they don't know and they cannot plan ahead. For example, you have everything on the paper and all the content related things 
been written so students can plan ahead what is going to uh, be coming in front of them so they they should be prepared for this one so first lesson second lesson and you can add more for but for all the lessons mean uh, everything the schedule is repeated for units and lessons with the same mechanism you do not need to change the whatever you have started with the lesson and you have to go with the last till last session or lesson so it would be helpful for the students evaluation policy this is uh, self explanatory you can uh, set uh, me like homework after the weekly lectures the relative weight you can set this is normally uh, i mean like given from the management side but sometime uh, the teacher or instructor can set by themselves that what kind of relative weight uh, they can give for their work discussion of the weekly lectures for example six person so there is a total 100 marks for example and you have to divide how much percentage you want to, uh, a relative weight uh, for, for that kind of specific task? Short test, 10%, uh, midterm exams, 20%, other costs, four, and final test, 50%. So normally, because here it's already been written, it means it's from the management side. You do not need to change. You have to follow this rule evaluation policy. The next one is course schedule. This is uh, pretty simple. You have to schedule mean like implementation method, uh, inside class, online classroom, and uh, time record for the implementation, how many weeks you needed, and what kind of activities and units you do have it. First week, second week, third week. This is a, a, a general course schedule, um, which you, you can mention in this option. This is uh, almost the last one, uh, the time plan for the course. The schedule is repeated for all lectures and lessons with the same mechanism. Once you said it, uh, we already discussed, this is that introductory lecture, you have to plan, read the homepage, view the course plan, view the course and success information, view the evaluation policy, um, and dating forum participates in the blackboard. So whatever you want, you have, uh, to be written over here. Uh, this is already uh, written by the management. Me, like this is an example for you. You can make editing as I told you that if you want to change something, you simply click on that one and click on edit. And here is a form in front of you because it's originally is an Arabic, so it is open in the form of Arabic. So you can change whatever you want. You can add, you can delete. And once you're done, as I told you earlier in the start that you can uh, have some by default options, but if you want to change, you can go ahead. I'm gonna make it cancel. I'm gonna make it translate to English again. So that's all from the course plan form. Uh, this was our core objective to discuss uh, the course uh, plan form in detail that how you can uh, go ahead to prepare this course plan, how you can make it editing, how you can hide information from the students and uh, how you can translate them into English. Another interesting thing that, uh, for example, you don't want to translate every time I told you, you just need to make it editing and you can put it in English one time, it will be done next time. And the second option you can uh, next to edit, make unavailable. Unavailable means this would not be available for the students, nobody can see it. There are multiple different options. So you can, and one more thing, look, if you can drag and drop, this, this is more easy. You, you can change their location as well. Okay. You can drag and drop. Yeah. For example, I want to change the location of this option. You can easily look. So now this is up and this is down. So it's up to you. You can rearrange all the forms and information according to your need and requirement. If you want to rearrange them, you can do it. 
and if you want to copy or save as you can do a head once mean for example uh, you have a, a multiple courses and um, you have multiple classes different classes four or five classes but the same course you can prepare one uh, course plan and you can copy to other course plans you can export this to other course plan no need to uh, I mean like write it again and again so this is a really good option available for you guys so this is uh, I mean like uh, that's all from the session if you have any questions you can ask me please related to the form thank you for your time if you have any questions you can ask me please Thank you everyone for your time. I am gonna repeat it last time that, uh, I mean like um, in start, I told you that uh, we are planning to bring the series of uh, different sessions for related to upgradation of the Blackboard. And uh, I mean like, believe me, there are too many options which are available outside the Blackboard on paid, I mean paid services, but inside uh, uh, like uh, Blackboard, you can have the free one. The best service is safe assign. We will discuss maybe in the coming session that how you can check the plagiarism for the research purpose or assignment purpose. This is another interesting topic that is coming soon. So keep in touch, uh, stay tuned uh, for the next session. And if you have any question for this session, you can ask me, please. Thank you for your time.